vote me up, fucking vote me up, bitch, let's get it, bro. Ay, yeah, ay, yeah. Shark Gaming here. So, yesterday I planned on making a video for you guys. Yesterday I filmed it. I filmed this part, like the video part, but half of the gameplay, like the screen recording on my Xbox, did not record for whatever reason. Maybe my storage was full. Um, it was an X Factor choice pack, and it was actually a pretty good one, too. We had a choice between Larkin, Quinn Hughes, and uh, Braden Point. I ended up choosing Larkin. I was pretty frustrated that I was not able to put it together. You know, I had, like I said, the audio recording and the video recording, but I did not have uh, a third of the uh, the screen recording. And it, the most important part of the screen recording, you know, if it was the beginning, the intro, whatever, I probably still could have scraped together a video, but the X Factor pack did not get recorded, and I didn't want to give you guys a crappy video. So we're here with the re weekly rewards pack opening. And uh, before I get into the, the weekly rewards pack opening, I have a storage tip for you guys. And uh, at the end of the pack opening, I'll play a game of Hot Champs for you. I'll try to squeeze that in if not. Um, maybe, maybe not, but I probably will. Uh, just for some Hot Champs ca uh, content, just play a game for you guys. Test out the team for the week. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to start recording this right now. So it is recorded now. Um, so yeah, a storage tip. I was just exchanging in my silver collectible squad battle rewards that uh, came out today. So, the storage set has not been released yet. The storage set has not been released yet, and that's a problem for a lot of people because a lot of people have completed the fantasy hockey objectives, including myself, and they don't want to get rid of these MSPs. And if you're wondering why don't people want to get rid of these MSPs, if you're thinking about getting rid of these MSPs and you haven't already, don't. Don't get rid of these MSPs. So far, there's technically three MSPs that have been released yet. Uh, the Hut Headliners, the Prototypes, and the Fantasy Hockey. The Fantasy Hockey is a limited uh, time. Uh, MSP, as you can see, this one has a time limit, as this one doesn't, and neither does the Hut Headliners. So there's seven, basically eight days left of uh, Fantasy Hockey. I think November 3rd is the last day, so November 2nd I'll probably do a pack opening for you guys if I don't manage to get my hands on an Evo card until then. But uh, there's no storage set. Usually the storage set gets released in the middle of November. That's when it got released last year, around like November 20th, I think it was last year. They released the storage set. And the reason why you want to keep these MSPs is because... I'll show you right now. But before I tell you why, I'm going to show you how to store them. As you can see, I did all of them to help me you know, speed run all my fantasy hockey objectives. So... The reason why you want to keep, uh, before I tell you why you want to keep them, as you can see, I'm storing them here. You want to store them here. Whatever uh, set you're done, as long as you know you're done these sets and you're never going to use them again, use them as storage sets. All the sets that you know you're not going to do again, just keep them there, right? Like, you can store up as many as you want, basically. This one, I'm using the 82 set to store these 82s. And since I had five, I'm using the 81 set to store my other two. So the reason why you want to keep these is last year they did X Factor the Team of the Season sets. They didn't just do X Factor the Team of the Season sets where you can exchange your X Factors plus Team of the Season collectibles for Team of the Season. They also did MSP to Team of the Season sets. So just in case they do that again this year, you want to keep these MSPs. Because Team of the Season rolls around, I think there's a good chance he sure gets one. He got one last year. I would say 85% chance he sure gets one. Taves, maybe, maybe not, but hold on to him just in case. You never know. Uh, next set. So I'm telling you guys why you want to keep them now. Good is probably not, but just in case, hold on to them. Marner and Kachuk. They, I'm pretty sure they got Team of the Season. I know Marner did. I had Team of the Season Marner on my team last year. I'm not sure if Brady Kachuk got one last year. Probably did. But there's a good chance the way Ottawa's playing right now and the way he's playing right now, I think Ottawa could very well get one. I mean, uh, Brady Kachuk could very well get one this year if he didn't get one last year. So these two definitely hang on to. And, I mean, they're 82s. What are you going to get for, you know, 82s? Not much. I mean, you get one collect one MSP collectible right now. And the MSPs are just going to get more expensive throughout the year. So you're not going to get a whole lot for them anyways. You might as well hang on to them. That's just my opinion. So this is just one way to store your cards without the storage set right now. I thought I'd give you guys that tip. Um, yeah, I mean, my team's pretty much set for this Hut Champs. I mean, every sin single thing I acquire... Um, in these packs, they should be going to fantasy hockey unless I pull like a crazy pull that would go on the team. Everything from now on is just going to Evo. I already have 24 collectibles. Um, 
you know, so we need, we're not going to get a week one MSP, not that I was really too hot about any of them anyways, the only one I would really want is Hurdle, but with the way that he's kind of got off to a slow start goal scoring wise, like obviously he's point per game so far this year, but he's only has one or two goals I think this year, you know, I wouldn't count on Hurdle getting to 99 because it's based off goals, if it was based on points, I think I would, Hurdle would be a safe investment, but uh you know, if, I, if Hurdle were to get a 99, then I would probably just get his X Factor anyways if I really wanted that card. Um, but, you know, I'm not think, I'm not really crazy about any of the Week 1 MSPs. And, you know, 32 collectible one, if you're going to spend that much, you might as well just save up. My camera cut out, so I was basically saying, let me just record it again. So I was basically saying with these 32 ones, it's not really worth it because you just get the regular Fantasy Hockey cards. Yes, they can go up to 99. You do have a chance of pulling a Matty Beneers or like a Lucas Raymond, which would be nice. But, uh... That's like a what? Like a 1 in... How many regular cards are there so far? Like 30? A 1 in 30 chance. 2 in 30 chance of getting a good regular fantasy hockey card. So, um, if you're going to spend 32 collectibles of these expensive collectibles, you might as well just put in the effort and get 4 more. Or spend money and get 4 more. And get the MSP one. At least you know what you're getting. And you're getting a cooler designed card in my opinion. So, I'm really looking forward to see who's in week 2. I mean, week 2, like I said, I'm not going to get a week 1 one. But I'm going to get a week 2 uh, one. That's my goal. I have 24 collectibles so far, so that means I need 12 more to get an MSP. I did the objectives. If you do the objectives, you get 24 fantasy hockey collectibles. It's like three or four hundred dollars, maybe even five or six hundred dollars worth of collectibles you get. So my advice to get them done, I got them done in like a, two days, and you, you just load your team up with um, fantasy hockey cards. I mean, you not at fantasy hockey cards, prototype cards. You load them up with prototype cards. And it speeds up the objectives because, you know, it's 225 games. If you have only one prototype card, you have to play the full 225 games. Every single prototype card you have, let's, let's say me, right? Let's say I completed all five of them. I got all five prototypes and I went and bought three more on the market. And as the thing went on, I earned free ones like Rick Nash, Joe Thornton, Jerome McGinley. Uh, Jerome McGinley and Nash were on my team now that you're about to see. I eventually got up to like 11. 11 fantasy cards so basically whatever the games were if you managed to get like 11 fantasy hockey i mean uh, prototype collectible cards you would take those 225 games and divide it by 11 so that's not a lot of games you really have to play especially if you do two minute periods what i did was two minute periods on rookie mode so it made the goals uh objectives a lot easier to hit i hit the goals objectives in like five or six games like the 85 goal mark for the prototype card so it was really quick um to get the goals done on rookie mode so two minute periods rookie mode load your card up with prototypes and you should be able to get th uh, those objectives done so that's that for fantasy hockey thought i'd just share that with you guys before the pack opening help you guys out so yeah i mean everything that's uh, important is done if you go to my collection you can even see all the fantasy things uh if you go to the objectives actually you can see that i collect finish the prototype and the fantasy so the prototypes you get some good rewards too you get uh you know for me i got a rick nash and a jerome mcginla i mean and i also got an 80 overall joe thornton who's obviously not on my team if he was an 84 he would definitely be on my team i love joe thornton one of my favorite players ever um but just yeah he just 80 overall just wasn't worth on my team so i'll show you guys all the collectibles that i earned Yeah, 24 collectibles, I mean, it's a shit ton. And for Hut Champs, another thing I'd recommend for Hut Champs collectibles is save two each week at least. If you can save three a week, even better, but at least two, save at least two a week because team of the season is actually not as far away as you think. I think it's like, what, eight or nine weeks away? If you save two a week at least, try to save three or even four. I'm sa I saved two this week. I got five collectibles from Hot Champs. I saved two of them, and I used three of them for power-ups. But save, save your Hot Champs collectibles because you can get a lot and a lot and a lot of packs. And what I would do is hold on to the collectibles, and then when Team of the Year comes around and you want packs at an instant, you have it. You have that option to just redeem them for Ultimate Choice Packs, Ultimate Packs, Jumbo Premium Packs, whatever. Uh, you know, you want to have those Hot Champs collectibles around Team of the Year and team of the season uh so yeah when team is team of the year comes redeem your saved up hut champ collectibles for packs and then you have another probably like 12 weeks until team of the season so 
I mean, it just it makes too much sense, right? So you have these periods like, like I said, nine weeks from now is team of the year. Drain your hut champs collectibles into packs when team of the year hits. And then you have another 12 weeks to save up for team of the season. But you also want to use them for power-ups too. That's why I said save two a week for packs at least. And then the rest you can just use for power-ups to upgrade your team gradually throughout the year. So enough talking. We can dive into the pack opening now. Uh, spent a lot of time talking. And uh, yeah, so we got quite a, a decent lineup of packs this week. Especially since I didn't... Uh, get a lot of, uh, you know, squad battle points by playing on rookie mode uh, to get those objectives done. And I didn't make it to diamond or platinum, uh, or no, I made it, I didn't make it to ultimate or whatever, what is it, ultimate, platinum, diamond, I forget, I forget how it goes, but I got the third highest. I didn't, I was the second highest uh, when it came to, like, reward ranks. I think I was diamond, but I slipped, um, no, no, I was, I was platinum, and I slipped to diamond, I think. What, whichever one it is, like the third highest thing, I was the second highest uh, rank rewards thing, and I slipped all the way down one, because before I went to work, it was like 3 p.m. Wednesday, I had to go to work, I was like a few hundred points clear of uh, the second highest rank, and I guess while I was at work, I fell out back into like the third place thing, so all we got was an elite players pack, two of those, and two players packs, we also got a mega pack from Squad Battles Rewards, and we also got uh, these three packs that I got from the Silver Collectibles. So we got a mini NHL players pack, a players pack, and a prime pack. I could have chose a jumbo premium pack instead of the mini NHL players pack, but because of Evo, I thought it would be a good idea to get this mini NHL players pack. It definitely ups our odds uh, big time to pull an Evo. So I'm hoping for an Evo, an X Factor, anything. So I'll give you guys a team update before we dive into the pack opening, actually. I know I keep I keep saying, oh, no, no, I'll get into the pack opening, this and that. But uh, just a quick recap. This is the team. I'm not even going to dive into it too much. First line still the same. So second line, we added uh, Dylan Larkin. Thought I'd pair him up with Iserman. That's a pretty cool duo. Uh, Cole Caulfield with Bellavo and X-Factor Keller. And we got a golden the golden goal line. I wanted to get the Game Day Crosby, but Game Day Crosby was like 60k yesterday, and I just got this gold one for 19k. I mean, 40k for a plus one upgrade, yeah, I, I, it just wasn't worth it for me. A card, like, that Game Day Crosby is just a depreciating asset. Um, you know, when the 86 Crosby gets released, that 85 Crosby is going to be like 20k. The price of this 84 and this 84 will probably be about 10k. So I'd much rather lose 10k than lose like 30k on a player. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we got Rick Nash, Drew McGinla. That we got for free in those uh, prototype objectives. So, yeah, the golden goal line. I mean, this was literally Team Canada's first line, I'm pretty sure, uh, in 2010. I know Nash and Crosby were a duo in 2010. I'm not sure if uh, Jerome McGinn. Uh, no, I know Jerome McGinn and Crosby were a duo. Rick Nash, I'm pretty sure he was on that line. It might have been someone else. Uh, defense, we got Brian Leach and Adam Fox together still. Uh, Icons Bork with Lidstrom. Makar with Yossi. So, yeah, I mean team's still looking good. Uh, goaltenders, we actually upgraded Hellebuck to Shitsterkin. I'm pretty happy with him so far. I've played two games, 1.5 uh, goals against. So yeah, I mean, I'm gonna, you know, be back with the pack opening. And yeah, time to open up these packs. Okay, so we'll start with the untradables. Might as well. Yeah. So elite players packs. We'll start with the players pack. Pulling for an Evo. I really hope we get an Evo, but, uh, you know, we'll cross our fingers and hope, right? Rhymer. Man, lots of shit, eh? <laughs> yeah, so, no Evo so far. Um, you know, that, that will just be fodder for uh, the Evo sets. Fodder. <laughs> Chell guys are using FIFA terms now. It's kind of funny. Hearing everybody say fodder now. So, yeah, so far, our best pulls an 82 Bertuzzi. I mean, nothing crazy there. I don't think these are the players' packs, not the elite players' packs. So, hopefully, we got better luck here. I don't even know why I'm using language like that. Hope. We are pulling for a better pull. So we got two eighty two so far, I think. Was this Smith an eighty two? Yeah, that's weird. So three eighty two's done there. Donald Fum. 
<laughs> so a good chunk of 82. So the luck's definitely heading heading in the right direction. So our next best pull is likely to be an 83. Okay, our last untradeable pack here. So far, it's just fodder. Fodder that will be used for the fantasy hockey sets. But I don't mind, you know. It just makes things a lot easier for, like, November 2nd when I do my uh, fantasy hockey thing. Uh, my fantasy hockey pack opening. It'll, you know, it'll definitely help, you know, as far as, like, me spending less money, I guess. Like, if I get up to, like, 30 collectibles or whatever, which I'm probably not with this... But uh, even if I get up to like 28, 27, 28, that's like, what, like 30 less dollars I have to spend. So I'm debating whether to do like a $60 pack opening or a $100 pack opening. But the last day of fantasy, I'll probably be doing a pack opening. Unless for whatever reason the event ends on November 2nd, but I'm pretty sure it ends on the 3rd. Okay, an All Stars jersey. Man, just fodder, fodder, fodder. Yep, just more fodder, pretty much. I mean, those two I can quick sell. I don't really need bronze jerseys. The rest will be used as fodder. Okay, so we got the players pack. Yeah, I might as well go with that one next for the boys. I think we'd pull at least one fantasy hockey card, you know, with all these lower overall packs, but nothing. Yeah, we'll just use it all as fodder. Okay, let's go with the mini NHL players pack next. Man, just more fodder. Man, 82 has been our highest pull so far. That's pretty freaking crazy to think about. I hope for at least one good pull. Yeah. That's kind of disappointing, not going to lie. What a brutal pack opening, honestly. But that did not go according to plan. <laughs> There's no other way around it. Like, I'm tempted to see how many fantasy hockey collectibles we even got out of that. That's what I'm curious of now. Seemed like just a fucking shit ton of fodder. So yeah, I mean, I... Th yeah, I mean, we should have, we should make it on time. Like I said, November 2nd, I'll actually probably do the pack opening then. So, yeah, it does expire the 3rd, I think. So, November 2nd, I'll do a pack only money just to kind of solidify me getting uh, a fantasy hockey collectible. I mean, a fantasy hockey MSP. So, we definitely don't have any 85s. I mean, I don't even think we pulled an 83, not that I can remember. Yeah. Probably some 82s. Yeah. Only 11. Oh my goodness. So yeah. We didn't even get a single fucking fantasy hockey collectible, I don't think. Unless the gold one fills up, but doubt it. Yeah. I mean, at least the 
sets are kind of like there to be done, right? So yeah, I mean, when I get back, we'll, we'll play a game of uh, Hut Champs for you guys, and yeah, that'll basically be the video. So we are back, and uh, so yeah, I mean, time to press record. So yeah, we're 0-0. I've not played a game yet, but uh, yeah, just a quick recap. If you want to see the full team analysis, go back a little bit, probably like six minutes ago, I guess, or whatever in the video. If you scroll back enough, you'll see the more explanation in depth, in depth explanation of the team. So yeah, just a quick recap. I'm just gonna scroll through the lines, show you what we're working with. Pretty happy with the lineup this week. Shesterkin, even though he's a smaller goalie. Um, then Hellebuck, I usually like using goalies that are six foot four and above. Six foot three is kind of pushing it. Apparently, Shitsterkin is really good in this game. I've never used a Shitsterkin until now. Even last game, I didn't use Shitsterkin, but I've heard good things about Shitsterkin. So hopefully, he delivers. If not, he'll just be used as fodder uh, since he's untradeable. You know, if he's not good, then I'll just go ahead and buy the live moments Ottinger. You know, that's the goalie I was kind of looking at. I enjoyed Hellebuck. Hellebuck had a really good record for me. He was like, what was he, like 41 and like 17 for me? Like, that's a really good percentage of me. That's online, most of, mostly. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Hellebuck was good. I just felt like it was time to upgrade. Um, I was also looking at the uh, Heritage Classic um, Markstrom, but Monger. He's usually good in this game as well, so I'll probably get eventually get live moments. Odinger as my starter. And I, I'm kind of tempted to just use Shitsterk and his fodder, but we'll see what happens. I kind of regret going after that Tarasenko now, the game day Tarasenko. Had he gone up to 84, that would have been a nice player to have on the team, but at 83, he just wasn't good enough to make my team. So yeah, puck drops in, what, like three seconds? Yeah, there we go. Puck is dropped, first game of Hut Champs. Oh my goodness. Notifications getting in my way. Obviously, you can't see it on the screen record, but I hate it when the notifications pop up while you're playing. Especially when the puck's in your own zone. That's the worst. Oh my goodness, my defense is brutal. Biggest skill issue I have, it's probably everywhere, but the one that really stands out to me is my defense. My defense in this game can be absolutely horrendous at times. As you probably just saw there one minute in. The skill issue. Hopefully, despite the skill issue, we can still get some victories here. We managed to get nine last week after going 0 6. Five of them being one goal games. I think I dropped four or five games to o just OT alone. I was 0 4, 0 5 in overtime last Hut Champ. So, uh, no t I thought the tip in would be there, but he blocked it just in time. And just sloppy play there, but Leach recovered. Leach is just fucking OP in this game. He might be the best defenseman in the game right now. Right now. Obviously, better D-man will eventually get released, but... Or 87 Makar. I haven't tried 87 Makar, but I heard he's OP already. The thing is, they've released so many Makar cars that Makar has lost his value this year. Like, Makar was so inflated last year's price because he's the best defenseman in the game. Oh, Daniel Sedin. Yes! Let's go. But yeah, like I was saying, Makar, his price last year was super inflated. Like, I had his 94 last year, and his 94 card was worth, like, over 200k pretty much the whole year until the end. Even his 94 and his 90, the ones above 94, like his 97, 98, 99, they were just super expensive. So, Makar was by far probably the most expensive defenseman in the game besides that fantasy hockey Seth Jones. And, you know because it was so scarce, right? Last year, Makar was a really scarce defenseman, but this year they made so many Makar cards that his his values dropped. Like, there's no scarcity with Makar this year because everybody has the chance of getting a 99 Makar or a 99 Bedard. For me, I'm going to choose the 99 Makar when the time comes probably most likely unless I pulled an X-Factor Makar. But uh, for me, I'm going to probably choose Makar. I'd say there's a 90% chance. Obviously, that's probably months down the line, but even, not, even if... Uh, I don't like there's still so many Makar cards like it's just the scarcity is not there especially since everybody who pre-ordered the game got like a not 85 one so the 85 is basically the same as the 86 like 86 Makar was not that cheap as it is now last week like he might be the cheapest 86 besides uh, Hiro Senki and maybe Hillary Knight.
Definitely the cheapest male 86. Oh, come on, Iserman. Let's go, Fox. Oh, my goodness. Did not expect the computer poke check on my end. And what kind of fucking pass was that by me? I thought Fox won that race. I don't see why that's an icing call, but as Don Cherry would say, that's fucking bullshit. Because Don Cherry, I don't know if you guys remember this growing up, but Don Cherry would go crazy about the icing calls sometimes. He would be like, oh, it's freaking. <laughs> like, oh, if it's close, just fucking call off the icing. Why are you just delaying the fucking game? Out of respect to Don Cherry, they should just have more of a hybrid ice and calls. Oh. Come on, Keller. Keller is so freaking OP. His card last year was nuts, too. Let's go, Line A. Oh. I should have one-timed that, honestly. Line A is such a freaking sniper in this game. Like, just a precision... They still haven't fixed the computer defense. Like, when you're not controlling your defense, they still do the same shit where they get out the way. It's like, bro, if, my, if the offense is coming at me, why am I going the other way? And what a snipe by Beliveau. I think we might get a rage quit here soon. Beliveau is still nasty in this game. Obviously, the face-offs aren't great. Like, I think he's a better winger than he is a center in this game. But we'll eventually... Uh, I mean, who's even on that line? We got Caulfield there and... Keller, I think, as well, so we'll eventually get that sorted out. I mean, I don't mind him being my number three center right now. The rest of my centers are really good down the middle, so. Come on, City. Oh, I should have passed it to Panarin. What was I thinking? Let's go. Le oh, Lidstrom's freaking nasty. Oh, Bork saves the day. Oh, sloppy play by me. The skill issue. This guy's definitely got a skill issue. I mean, because uh, I, I have a skill issue, and I'm fucking kicking this guy's ass. So I can't imagine. If I'm bad at this game, actually, I would even go as far as say I'm terrible at this game. Um, so if I suck at this game, this guy freaking double or triple or even quadruple sucks at this game. I mean, just domination by me. If I had a British accent, it would probably sound funnier. So, yeah. About to drop the puck here. Second period, baby. Let's go. Eventually, AI is going to become so advanced that somebody's going to come up with like a like an accent microphone where you speak into the mic and it changes your accent instead of having to like go through and edit the voice change. And these freaking notifications are getting my way. Oh, let's go, Daniel. Let's go, Daniel. Come on, Dan. Let's go, Dan. <laughs> oh. Tried to cross crease. And Panarin was not fucking ready to catch that cross crease. He literally got out of the way. What the fuck, Panarin? And freaking... Oh, my goodness. The AI in this game is still fucking ass. Like, and I'm not one of these guys to complain about the game. Like... Like, I'm not one of these guys who doesn't acknowledge that I have a skill issue. Like, I acknowledge I have a skill issue, but it doesn't change that the gameplay is still shits. Like, certain aspects of it. Like, the AI, like, I like how they fixed a few things. Like, they definitely improved the goalies this game, but the fucking um, AI offense and the AI defense is still fucking terrible. When you're not controlling it. What a tip in my line, eh? And this guy's going to rage quit for sure. This is a fucking guaranteed rage quit. Man. This guy knows that he's fucking shit. Uh, with all due respect, right? Like, good game. You know. Is he on Xbox? If he's on Xbox, I'll message him GG. No hard feelings. You know. And he is uh, on Xbox. I'm going to send him a message. GG. You guys probably can't see that, but I'm sending him a message right now. For whatever reason, Xbox doesn't screen record that. Or maybe it does. I don't know. As far as my recent memory, it doesn't. So we're 3-0. and I mean, uh, we're 1-0. and 3 nothing win. Uh, we started last... Hut champs, like I said, 0-6. Five of them being one-goal games. Uh, I think three of them in overtime. So we went 0-3 for overtime and just 0-5 one-goal games and just 0-6 in general our first six games and still came back to win nine games. So um, pretty happy about that. So, yeah, there's your guys' uh, Hut champs um, gameplay. So, yeah, I mean, thank you guys for watching. 
and uh, have a great day.